Hello again, YouTube, and welcome back to Just Get a Tesla. My Tesla's not here at my charge point, and the reason for that is because of, well, all of that. Basically, I got back last night at about half past ten, and it was snowing quite hard, and I already knew from looking at the cameras that, well, that's my driveway, which, due to the odd layout of my backyard, I actually need to reverse down and I just didn't fancy doing it at night and to be honest I mean <laughs> if you can see it's actually quite deep now so I've had this before in various other bits of the winter where frankly we are going to get a struggle to get up and down here and well yeah it's it is quite deep so basically what I've done instead is I have rigged up the <laughs> definitely to be recommended 35 meter long oh yes um, extension cable so plugged in down there in the three pin and the cable is completely buried under here completely buried now under the snow because it was snowing buckets last night which is nice I then got whoop, yes there you go a weatherproof uh, extension reel at the end of that and then another extension cable which goes down here down here down here down here where <laughs> it is <laughs> meeting the plant pot of joy and the reason why there's a plant pot is that this second extension cable doesn't have a weatherproof thing on the top so all I've done is shoved a plant pot <laughs> shoved a plant pot over it so that uh, it is weatherproof and it does the job absolutely fine and then we get outside the gate and there's Mr Tesla there is one thing that's wrong and the things that's wrong is I'm using the Hyundai charger and the reason why is that at half past ten at night in the middle of heavy snow my Tesla granny charger didn't want to play ball it was plugging in it was lighting up uh, it wasn't suggesting there were any faults but the car was saying no charge I think we need to repeat that now okay I've gone and got the Tesla charger which is in the Hyundai chargers case uh, but before we do anything let's just have a look at the car and see how well it has done overnight so this has been plugged in for nine hours nine hours yeah nine hours off charging it came in on 11 percent and we're now on 35 so that's actually a very useful uh, amount of power to put in i did a granny charger video a long long time back well october or something where i was questioning was there any purpose in having a granny charger well i'm now using a granny charger so to answer my own question of five months ago whatever it is yes there is a purpose in having a granny charger for exactly this kind of contingency it's slow but slow is better than nothing so 11 percent in the cold that would have eroded down to too low a state of charge and the car was already warning me that it was uh, too low and it needed charging up so this does at least give me something however with where i'm doing it so yes i'm on the pavement and I'm actually completely on the pavement, but you can get past. So I'm going to shift this during the day. But first of all, I want to swap the chargers over and understand why the Tesla one wasn't working and why the Hyundai one is. Okay, I've unplugged Hyundai and I've plugged in Tesla. We have got green lights on the top, which checking the manual says everything is fine. Now, before anyone says that it's not going to stay sat there like this, this is just for the test. And before anyone also then complains about the fact that, oh, I'm charging up EVs on not just one, but two extension cables. Let's just talk about a few basics in terms of electrical safety, which is that is plugged in to a properly installed by an electrician outdoor charging socket with all of the wiring in very robustly the power feed coming in from the building is most definitely robust 
Uh, this is a 13 amp professional cable. That's waterproof. This is a 13 amp professional cable. So all in, that means that this can draw 10 amps all day long and none of it gets even remotely warm. I mean, you know, touching, this is stone cold. So my wiring is good. This is safe before anyone complains. Right, let's squeeze our way down here. Rip. With the wire, now I'm gonna to have to open the cart. And give the charger a shove. Ah. <laughs> so, that has just started charging first time. Good. It didn't want to charge at all last night. It just made clicking noises. And no, it wasn't that there was a load of snow in the connector. It wasn't that I hadn't shoved it in properly. I was doing everything right and it just wasn't having it. So the Hyundai charger was the ample replacement. But I don't know. I honestly don't get it. But if I go in the car oop, again now, we can see the... <laughs> Shush. Yes, it's back to drawing two kilowatts, uh, which is exactly what it should be drawing. So it's on 10 amps. How strange. Anyway, this is going to be a multi-part video. So this is, what, Thursday morning now. I need to shift this car out of the way because it is on the pavement and uh, let's get it clear. Uh, but we're going to do some more overnight charging because this weather isn't about to clear uh, anytime soon and we're also going to do it in wifey's ionic as well and that's got a smaller battery so uh 10 amps of charge in that will fill the battery quite a lot quicker than this it's towards the end of the day i've got the cable back out and i'm going to go and plug the car back in because i'm still only on about 35 or so percent i'm going to need more than that over the next few days let's see if we have more success this time than we did last time. I am about as far into the bush as is really possible to go. Good. So we can connect now without any problems. Why wouldn't it connect last night? But like I said, I really can't get any closer in uh, than I am now without eating the bush. Uh, the pavement is nice and wide here and then it gets restricted down here anyway so I'm not blocking the pavement before anyone says I'm really not you can get a push chair and anything else you want past it I'm just not leaving it here during the day when you get a lot of traffic and frankly I mean look you can see how quiet it is it is 10 past 6 in the evening and you've got the odd car going past and not really any people and this is a main road so it shouldn't really cause anybody a problem. But if I just go back into the car now to double check, we can see that. Yeah, we are 34% and charging at 10 amps. So it is 10 past six. I will see how much charge I've got in the morning when I unplug it. Morning after, we've not really had much overnight. Which is unexpected because we were supposed to have, it's slippery as hell, and um, everybody else seems to have had piles. But, car's still here, let's go and see how much charge we've actually got. So it's done, what, 13 hours? Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> I'm not sure what I was listening to, but it's coming on <laughs> without me doing anything. Right, we are now on. 70% that's decent so I think it was on 34 uh, or something uh, last night we're now on 70 so fine I'm going to unplug as you can see the cold is uh, doing exciting things to the tire pressure sensors I'm not actually driving anywhere particular but cold does make your tires drop but actually having a little bit more flex in these tires isn't necessarily a bad thing so I'm going to unplug and shift the car just so that I'm clearing the uh, pavement out of the way. And then tomorrow, wifey's car.
is going to get a charge and I suspect plugging that in overnight will pretty much charge it to full. Having now parked up I have just been scraping the floor. Some of this, I mean you can't get your foot into it but it is freezing quite solid now which is fun. Anyway, how's wifey's car doing? Yeah, just sat there. It's asleep. I swear I haven't timed this on purpose, but I am literally just plugging wifey's car in <laughs> and it starts coming down again, which is nice. Ah, dear me. So, same as last time, pull the cable through, squeeze past the thorny bushes of doom. So this will be interesting just to compare how the two cars actually charge. So let's go and have a look. Okay, so. <sighs> Good. Right, what I need to do is, because that's only charging at, Okay, so where do we need to go for this? We need to go into charging menu. Hang on, nope. No, 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 no. You'd never guess, would you, that I don't use her car that often. Menu, home, charging, well, I thought I had twisted. <laughs> I thought I had twisted on. Okay, so go on to charging. So let's have a look. Uh, charge management. Okay. Charge management. Okay. Charging current. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Ah, okay. It's down onto reduced. Okay. So I know from doing the Tesla that all of my uh, power connections are perfectly capable of supplying. 10 amps all the way through, so we're going to put it onto there. Okay, so that should now change. So her battery's on, yeah, yeah, there you go. So her battery's on 24%, and it's now taking, yeah, 2.2 kilowatts, which is 10 amps, and it's still going to take 16 hours uh, to charge up fully. Now, we're not going to get 16, we might get another, what time is it now? 20 past 6, so yeah, we'll get another 13, maybe 14 hours before I unplug it and shift it, but fundamentally, the granny charger is still doing its job. And once again, the reason why I am still using the granny charger instead of <laughs> uh, going down the drive is that I think this is a bit of rain actually, which is interesting because the rest of the country has been getting absolutely battered with snow today, but my driveway is relatively covered still, fairly heavily covered in snow, which has now turned to ice on the top. So instead of trying to shunt cars backwards down there, I've literally pulled it on here into this little pocket on the pavement uh, to use a granny charge. It's definitely a better solution. And it's not something I'm gonna use all the time, but I suppose the point about this charger is it's there for contingencies and things like this where you can't get to your charge point. And right here, right now, I can't actually do so. So once again, there's plenty of room to get past the car. Shouldn't cause any issues, hasn't done overnight. But if we go back and have another look at the charger, you will see, well, first of all, I can make some quite big <laughs> uh, footprints uh, in the snow. Uh, and basically the driveway is, well, yeah, it's, <laughs> there's a fair old bit of snow there. And of course my Starlink dish which I have just put there and that is still configuring. So we're not going to even try and go up and down there, which is why we're using the granny. But just as a reminder, I've got one long cable going all the way down here, going to weatherproof extension and sockets, and then another one going down here, sheltered under the platform. And You've got to see this. It is cool the way that, and that says 
Tesla and goes down like that. Um, pointless, but cool. Anyway, we are going to go and switch the car off and leave it overnight. So from 24% now, what will it be on in the morning? We've had another dump overnight, as you can probably see from Tesla Prize, which has got, well, quite a bit again. <laughs> so <laughs> this is why we are using the temporary granny charger <laughs> rather than trying to get it uh, up and down the drive. In fact, if we go and have a look at that, um, But it keeps doing it overnight, and then it's another absolutely uh, gorgeous day where I'm going to have to keep squinting because it's really, really, really mega bright. But hang on, let me switch the camera around. Yeah. So, I do not even want to think about shunting cars up and down here. So, my charger station is not in the most practical position uh, in the winter, as I've discovered. So, having made quite a naive, ah, do I need the granny charger, it's too slow video, uh, just after we first got the car, before we actually had a whole pile of snow coming down, the answer is yes, yes, you do need the granny charger, because otherwise, how on earth were you going to charge the car up? And you can see, just, <laughs> you know, this is decent snow. So, But my rigged up granny charger lead is still absolutely fine under its plant pot. So, cleared enough snow off already to be able to move it. But let's get in and have a look. Where are we at? Oh, okay. 92%. So it was on 24, actually. Hang on. Where's the, where's the, where's the light I'm trying to shade for? So yeah, uh, we are an hour and 35 away from 100%, 92%, 2.2 .2, uh, still, so that's 10 uh, amps. So it has, obviously this has added a whole load more percentage than uh, my car did, but this has got a much smaller battery. This is a 38 kilowatt hour battery versus my 78. Um, but, it does show that, obviously, a granny charger, if you're not doing mega miles, it's definitely worth having. Or in my case, if you're not going to be doing mega miles uh, and you can't get to your charge point because, well, I mean, look, you can see the road. It's drivable, but this is uh, half eight on a Saturday morning on an A-class road in Scotland and no one and nothing about Okay, we've just unplugged it. Um, <laughs> there's, um, yeah, I think that's called ingress. <laughs> um, yeah, there's actually quite a lot in there, isn't there? Well, yeah, it's like kind of icy. I got a little bit into my Tesla flap, a little bit, but well, that's quite a lot. Anyway, oh, yeah. is that going to show? It's just, yeah, it's shut. Right, okay. And again, because we're kind of on the path, I could leave it here all day, but I'm not going to do so. We're going to shove it across the road instead. And back to the charger for the first time in almost a week. So with the snow now having suddenly melted and really literally suddenly melted, we've had a big thaw overnight and a load of rain it's now monday and i first plugged in on the granny charger and set that up on wednesday night so almost a full week um but what do i make of the granny charger now that i've got a bit more experience with the car than when i first made my don't bother with the granny charger video well how can i put it i was wrong you do need the granny charger it is absolutely a worthwhile addition um what I was thinking about at the time was that it's so slow, and it is, it is painfully slow on this car, but that doesn't matter if 
a bit of a trickle is actually all that you're going to need. Now, in my case, for the for the last, you know, um, end of last week and through the weekend, a trickle charge was the best we were going to get. You can see from the driveway that, you know, it is quite steep. So getting down that with not just a load of snow on top of it, but actually a load of frozen ice underneath the snow is a bad idea, especially as I'm stupidly on summer tyres this year, something which we will fix for next winter. But the trickle charge has done its job. It is slow, but there's something. It's better than nothing. And I know for a lot of you guys from the comments that I've had, actually, that's perfectly suited to your uses, in which case, absolutely fine. Again, remember the absolute safety basics have a properly rated 13 amp um, extension lead and a socket that's actually wired in uh, properly, and you should be absolutely fine. Anyway, that's it for this episode of Just Get a Tesla. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Hit the bell icon. You already know the rest. And I'll see you very soon back here on Just Get a Tesla.